It's October 10th, 2020. We're here for another virtual tour of the Nall Bunny Run. I'm Michael Behrens. And it's uh, this time of year, uh, we're, we're starting to see more winter birds returning. I'm hoping, uh, last weekend I saw my first orange crowned warblers, which is a little greenish warbler that spends the winter here. And I'm hoping we'll see or hear a ruby crowned kinglet which is another little greenish bird that's here in the winter with a big white eye ring and wing bars. And to me, the ruby crowned kinglet is a real symbol of, of winter and changing seasons and cooler weather for me in central Texas. And it makes a little, a little typewriter-like call, a little which is a real common sound if you're tuned into it here in the winter. So maybe we'll see or hear one of those. Also, we are in the middle of Texas Parks and Wildlife Department's Texas Pollinator BioBlitz. We have a lot of blooming plants here in the fall uh, and a lot of pollinators use uh, these, take advantage of these blooming plants in the and emerge in the fall. So lots of butterflies and bees and even some wasps and flies. So I'm hoping as the morning progresses and, the, and gets warmer, we'll be able to see and document some of these Texas pollinators as well. So let's uh, let's make our usual circuit of the of the preserve and see what we can find. Turning onto the side trail headed east, we're looking sort of into the sun, and we saw this neat spider web that uh, is about 15 feet over the middle of the trail, reflecting the sunlight, and you can even see in the middle here. A little spider moving around. Looks like some broken spots in the web where it must have caught thing, caught insects during the night. If you can look at the wide angle view of this how the heck did that spider get his get its web across this span of about, gosh, about six or seven feet way up, 15, 20 feet in the air? Here is the ruby crown king. Tiny little bird. Yeah! Oh, I'm so glad I got to see it. First one of the season. We were lucky enough to hear and then briefly see a ruby crowned kinglet, which I uh, mentioned in the introduction as one of the winter resident birds that's newly returning now to central Texas. It's a little greenish bird with uh, big white eye rings and, and black and white wing bars. Uh, and it's a real common uh, winter resident here in Central Texas. They, uh, they breed up in the uh, boreal forests of Canada and the Northern United States. The boreal forests up there in Canada are super important for many native songbirds as breeding habitat. Migratory songbirds go up there to breed and then come down and a lot of those birds winter in Texas or they spend their winter further south in Texas. So uh, in central Texas here, migration is not a straightforward story. We have uh, birds that are here all year long, like the Carolina wrens and the cardinals. We have birds that are just here in the summer, like uh, the uh, scissor tail flycatcher and western kingbirds. We have birds that are just here in the winter, like the ruby crowned kinglet, orange crowned warbler. Uh, and we have birds that just pass through on their way further north or south uh, during these migrations. And then we're also, we also have overlapping eastern and western ranges of birds. So central Texas is a really varied and exciting place for, for bird observation. Yeah, oh, I wish I could see him. Yeah, that's what that, that raucous stuff. 
we just heard uh, a bunch of raucous calls that when I heard them earlier in the distance, I thought maybe there were swallows, but then it just hit me. That's the super raucous call of our, our non-native, but probably considered by many naturalized by now, monk parakeets, a species I've only seen a couple times before on the bunny run. So as we go down the hill later, maybe we'll get to see, we'll get to see them. It sounded like they were, they were maybe between here and the Sandy Prairie area down the hill. So we just came out and found this amazing patch of uh, frostweed. See, it's blooming everywhere. And we see a couple monarch butterflies. I had one in the scope, but it flew off. So maybe this other one that's fluttering around will land and we can see it again. So here's that monarch butterfly we saw flying over and it saw all these white frostweed flowers and decided that looks like a good place to, to stop. And wow, I can see its tongue going into the flowers now. It's feeding there. We're starting to see some monarch butterflies move through the area. They're migratory too, of course. They're pretty famous for their migrations into Mexico, their yearly migration in and out of Mexico that they do over several generations. And boy, this is a beautiful, beautiful bug. I hear a Phoebe in the background. Phoebe. And that monarch butterfly found a place it really likes. It's spending a lot of time on these frostweed flowers, drinking nectar. It's, you can see its tongue being extended down into each one. That was really fun, there it goes. In addition to this being a really good spot for the butterfly to feed, you can see it. This, it's soaking up some sunlight too. All insects are uh, exothermic, cold-blooded. They can't warm themselves. So, but you often see butterflies, especially earlier in the morning, finding sunny places like this, and then they'll open up their wings in the direction of the sun to soak up soak up some heat. We spotted this northern mockingbird perched on a bunch of vegetation along the fence line. We're near the north east uh, corner of the preserve. I paused because I was hearing I'm hearing a house wren chattering, which is a winter bird. Northern mockingbirds here are here year round. They're our state bird. They're really not, afraid, not as afraid of people as a lot of other birds. They're mostly gray. They have these cool tan yellowish eyes if you get close enough to see them. And uh, they have these neat white wing patches and long tail very versatile, eat all kinds of insects and some seeds and other things. And this one looks like it's, this is kind of rare for a mockingbird just sitting out in the open and not singing and not moving very much otherwise. I wonder if he's just soaking up some sun and enjoying a warm, clear morning like we are. Here's an easier, a bird we've been hearing much more than seeing this morning, 
a Carolina Wren. This one just ha happens to be content enough to stay to stay in this uh, in this perch for a while, even letting me set up the. Oh, there he went. Well, that was fortunate even to get that much of a view of a Carolina Wren, a very common neighborhood bird. This is a nice little patch of Calpen daisy, which is another important plant for pollinators in the fall. And we're finding lots of little Western honeybees. I think I learned them as European honeybees. And we have, uh, there are some bee boxes on the Nall Bunny Run that I don't know the story behind, but someone keeps some bees here. So I wonder if these Western honeybees are from the boxes that are uh, on another spot on the preserve. So this is a dragonfly. I believe it's a swift set wing. And it has all these beautiful markings like tiger stripes on the side of its thorax, the spots on the abdomen. See how it's perched there. It's also facing the sun like the monarch butterfly. It's exothermic, so it has to warm up in the sun. But it's also hunting from this perch. This is one of the perching dragonflies. Carolyn spotted this green heron, which is perched on a cypress tree branch, leaning way over to reach the water. Sorry about all the obstructions. This was, it's hard to get a clear view of this bird. You see it's reaching way down, picking stuff out of the water. Green herons are migratory and they're here in the summer Wow. And this bird is probably on its way south. It's probably from further north and passing through on its way south here using the bunny run as a place to rest and, and uh, find some more food. The uh, we don't see many herons and egrets on the bunny run because there's not much good habitat for them. You'd think, oh, a lake. Well, of course, lake is good heron habitat, but herons need more shallow transitional areas, whereas Lake Austin is sort of like a big bathtub full of water, you know, without much, when you get to the water's edge, it's pretty abrupt. Um, there's not much of a, uh, oh, and it just heard us a downy woodpecker whinny in the background. Wish we had a better view of this heron, but it looks like it's picking little things out of the water. Hearing a boat go by now. So here's a but another species of butterfly, again on frostweed. Oh, look at its tongue coming out. I think this is one of the ladies. This is an American lady or a painted lady. I could also be wrong. I don't know my butterflies as well as my birds. Red Admiral is another possibility and look at it right beside it, a western honeybee. We found another monarch butterfly on frostweed. Now we're down by the water. Watching this beautiful monarch. A minute ago there was a western honeybee beside it. You can see how bright, oh there's the bee. Oh, now they're both, now the bee is still there. Now we're looking at a western honeybee. Now 
now that it's finally a little later in the morning, I think we're seeing more pollinators coming out. Two bees now. Oh, one of the lower one you can see pollen. I think both of them have pollen on their back legs. Very cool. So we started with a monarch and ended up with two western honeybees. So we found another swift set wing dragonfly. This one looks like a female with a slightly thicker abdomen. And uh, there's a small group of, of dragonflies called set wings. And I think it's because they, they like to perch with their wings set forward. And often not, this one isn't doing it right now, the previous one was, but they'll often angle their, their abdomens up too, in, in a, which is called obelisking, which is a way they can, they can change the angle of their bodies presented to the sun and control their, control their heat a little bit, control their temperature. We found this variegated meadowhawk dragonfly you can see, I believe this is a male. It looks pretty bright. The highlights are red, reddish orange instead of yellow. A female would have yellow highlights. You see before it put its wings down, it has those stripes on the abdomen. I mean, on the thorax, those, horizontal, those diagonal stripes that end with the little yellow dots on the bottom of the thorax. You can see it's moving its head around. It's every once in a while it's leaving and it's coming back to that same perch. Oh, beautiful. These percher dragonflies can be so much fun to observe because they, they sometimes they like to find just a single perch similar to birds in the flycatcher family. Like last month, our footage of the Eastern Phoebe on that perch that came, made a couple forays and came back to it while we just left the camera pointed at the perch. And this is a beautiful male variegated meadowhawk. Can I zoom in a little more? Yeah, can start to see, can start to see the, the spines on the leg, on the legs. The dragonflies use their spiny legs to catch other insects and hold them with the spines on their legs. And then just take big bites out of them. And that's a neat view of the face the orangey face and the big wraparound eyes. These can see almost a complete sphere around them. Very cool watching this dragonfly. Oh, and now you can see that yellow dot I was talking about, both of them at the bottom of those white stripes and he flew off, he came back again. Oh yeah, look at those white stripes before he settles his wings. You can see those diagonal white stripes on the thorax with the little yellow dots at the bottom. We'll have to look it up. I don't know my skinks very well. I think there's a four-lined skink that's local to the area. I can get a... Actually, I'll just back up and use my big camera. So we're com concluding another virtual tour of the Nall Bunny Run for October 2020. And uh, it was a pretty warm morning. October can be a really variable month in Central Texas. You never know if you'll be wearing a coat and fighting a, a cold north wind or if it'll feel almost like summer again, like it did today. But we have a nice, nice breeze to counteract the the uh, clear sun, and um, we had a pretty fun morning. We, uh, I heard and briefly saw a ruby-crowned kinglet, my first of the season, uh, and unfortunately I couldn't capture any, any footage of it, any still photos or video, but it was fun to see and record as my first one of the season. Uh, we uh, 
we heard some monk parakeets, which is uh, very unusual for the preserve. I've only, I only have two, one or two records of monk parakeets on the, on the Nall Bunny Run. And at first, I was so unprepared for them. At first, I thought they're, we heard their squawking in the distance, and I thought it was the, uh, uh, like, uh, I thought it was one of the swallows, like cliff swallows or, uh, or northern roughwing swallows make a similar sound, but much, much uh, quieter. And uh, we did see a couple cliff swallows fly over heading south, but that turned out to be, that sound turned out to be monk parakeets, if I finally realized. We got uh, a lot of footage of neat pollinators. We saw a few uh, monarch butterflies and we saw the vast expanses of blooming frostweed, which was really cool. We uh, saw lots of western honeybees on the frostweed, uh, a few monarch butterflies, one uh, butterfly I have yet to identify, a painted lady maybe, maybe or American lady. And um, coming back up the hill, we got to see a variegated meadowhawk dragonfly, a nice male with the orange-red highlights. And that reminds me, earlier on, we got to see a nice swift setwing dragonfly that was uh, down amongst the, on the sandy prairie area in the frostweed. So um, we got to, oh, we got some footage, obscured footage of a green heron that Carolyn spotted that was hanging out over a willow limb and, and reaching down into the water. I'm watching a common green darn or dragonfly fly over me as we talk. So it was a, uh, another, another really fun morning on the bunny run and I'm happy to be able to share it with everybody.